floating SUVs, aerial trains, and autonomous flying taxis. This is not a science fiction film, but a glimpse of what China is building for future transportation. Here are 10 of China's next generation transporting vehicles that are forcing the U, S, to play catch up. Number 10, BYD Yangwang U8. Let's start with the one that sounds fake until you watch it happen. The BYD Yangwang U8 is an all-electric luxury SUV that not only drives off-road, but it also survives floods by literally floating. No, this isn't a gimmick slapped on for a viral demo. This thing was engineered in China with emergencies in mind, which honestly makes it even more unsettling. The U8 uses a hydraulic suspension system that can actively raise or lower the vehicle, giving it a stance that looks aggressive on land and functional in chaos. When floodwaters rise past safe limits, the SUV automatically switches into emergency floating mode. The engine shuts down, the windows seal, the air conditioning stays on, the sunroof opens for airflow, and the vehicle becomes buoyant for up to 30 minutes. During that time, it can even move at about 3 km per hour, not fast, but enough to escape danger instead of panicking in it. And then there's the tank turn. The U8 can rotate 360 degrees in place, something you'd expect from a military vehicle, not a family SUV priced around 50 grand. It's equal parts absurd and impressive, and it sends a very clear message. China isn't just competing with Western automakers on price anymore. It's competing on audacity. What really hits home here is intent. This isn't about weekend lake adventures or flashy marketing. BYD explicitly says the floating feature is for emergencies, not play. That mindset engineering for worst-case scenarios instead of ideal ones is exactly why vehicles like this are catching global attention. It's not just innovation. It's preparedness baked into design. Number 9. China's Skytrain Wuhan's suspended Skytrain feels like something a city builds when it's done waiting for traffic to improve. Instead of fighting congestion at ground level, China just lifted public transit into the air, literally. This unmanned monorail runs along a 10.5-kilometer elevated track, cruises at about 60 kilometers per hour, and carries up to 200 passengers at a time. That alone would be impressive. But what really turns heads is how fast it came together. The entire system was built in just seven months, which is roughly the same time it takes to lay conventional rail, except this version avoids intersections, pedestrians, and accidents almost entirely. The brilliance here isn't just the tech, it's the urban logic. By moving trains above the city, you free up ground space for parks, roads, and development, while simultaneously making commutes faster and safer. Fewer collisions, fewer delays, and a cleaner traffic flow below. It's one of those ideas that feels obvious in hindsight, which is usually how you know it's a strong one. What I find fascinating is that China isn't pitching this as some futuristic novelty. It's framed as a practical solution, cost comparable to traditional rail, but with better long-term efficiency. That's the real flex. This isn't look what we can build, it's this works better, so why wouldn't we? If cities are systems, not just collections of roads, then the SkyTrain feels like China rewriting the operating manual and daring the rest of the world to keep up. Number 8. Ehang 216S, The Flying Taxi The Ehang 216S is where things start feeling genuinely disruptive. This isn't a concept car trapped in a design studio. It's a fully autonomous aerial taxi designed to move people across cities without a pilot, without a steering wheel, and without hesitation. It uses eight pairs of electric rotors, carries two passengers, and flies entirely on its own. You don't control takeoff, navigation, or landing the system does. And that's the point. Ehang isn't trying to make flying easier for humans. It's removing humans from the equation entirely. With a top speed of around 130 km per hour and an operational ceiling of 3,000 meters, the 216S is built for short to medium urban hops, not cross-country flights. Safety is baked into the design, too. Even if one rotor fails, the system can still land safely, which is the kind of redundancy you want when you're trusting a drone with your life. What stands out most is how normalized this feels in China's innovation ecosystem. There's no breathless, someday language here. This is positioned as a near-future mobility solution, especially for congested megacities where roads are already maxed out. From a global perspective, 
This is the kind of tech that forces regulators, planners, and competitors to react. Once flying taxis become viable in one country, they stop being science fiction everywhere else. Ehang isn't just building aircraft, it's accelerating the timeline. Number 7. NIO ET9 At first glance, the NIO ET9 looks like a high-end electric sedan with a premium price tag and serious performance credentials. Then it shakes snow off its roof like a dog, and suddenly you realize you're looking at something different. The ET9 uses an advanced hydraulic suspension system that allows the entire car to sway side to side, actively shedding snow without the driver lifting a finger. It's a small feature, sure, but it reveals a deeper philosophy. This car isn't just reacting to the environment, it's engaging with it. Under the hood, things stay just as serious. Dual motors deliver massive power, while a 120 kilowatt hours battery offers long range and can recharge in roughly five minutes. That charging speed alone feels like a quiet warning shot to the rest of the EV industry. Inside, it's unapologetically luxurious. And yes, you might want to secure your coffee before activating the suspension tricks, but that's part of the charm. The ET9 feels playful without being unserious, advanced without being cold. What makes it relevant in this list is how confidently China is pushing beyond catch-up EVs. This isn't about matching Tesla or Mercedes, it's about redefining what intelligence and comfort look like in motion. The ET9 doesn't just drive you, it performs for you. Number 6. Lazarus LMV 496 This one bends the rules a bit geographically, but it stays exactly where the transcript puts it, and honestly, it deserves the attention. The Lazarus LMV 496 is an electric motorcycle that transforms into a flying machine, and it feels like something pulled straight out of a sci-fi storyboard. On the road, it behaves like a high-performance electric bike with a range of around 60 miles, Flip a switch though, and four kerosene-powered jet turbines embedded in the wheels rotate downward, launching the vehicle into the air with a jaw-dropping 1,300 horsepower. Flight time is short about 10 minutes, but that's not the point. This is proof of concept taken to its extreme. It's expensive, limited edition, and wildly impractical for daily commuting. But innovation doesn't always start with practicality. Sometimes it starts by asking, can we even do this? and then answering with engineering instead of excuses. Placed next to China's transport breakthroughs, the LMV 496 highlights the contrast. The US often builds spectacles, while China builds systems. And that difference becomes more obvious with every new machine on this list. Number 5. GAC Gov. The GAC Gov doesn't try to look like a sci-fi fantasy. Instead, it quietly does something far more disruptive. It makes flying feel procedural normal, almost boring, in the best possible way. At its core, the GOV is a dual-mode vehicle made up of two separate systems that work together seamlessly. On the ground, you're riding on a four-wheel electric chassis that behaves like a compact EV built for urban streets and everyday navigation. Mounted on top of that is a detachable passenger capsule, essentially a drone fitted with six folding rotors that handle vertical takeoff and landing once it's time to leave the road behind. What really caught my attention is how little effort the user is expected to contribute. There's no traditional steering wheel inside the flight module, no pilot controls. You input a destination on a tablet and the vehicle handles the rest. It autonomously decides when to detach, when to fly, when to land, and even when to divert itself mid-flight to a charging station if power runs low. That last part matters, because it shows this isn't just about movement, it's about uptime. From a systems perspective, this is China thinking beyond vehicles and into mobility infrastructure. The Gov isn't asking, can people fly? It's asking, how do we make flying fit into daily routines without friction? And that's a much harder problem to solve. Technically, the separation of ground and air modules also solves one of the biggest flying car challenges, weight compromise. Each module only carries what it needs to perform its function, which improves efficiency across both modes. In short, it's a prototype for a future where driving and flying are just different tabs in the same interface. Number 4. The Flyer EV Tall. The Flyer feels like the moment urban commuters quietly start rethinking everything. Not because it's flashy, but because it goes straight for the pain point everyone shares gridlock. This electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft is designed specifically for short-range city travel. 
No runways, no airports, no elaborate prep. You lift off vertically, cruise above congestion, and land close to your destination. That alone would be compelling. But what makes the flyer stand out is how accessible it's trying to be. The control systems are designed for non-pilots. Safety features are layered heavily into the flight architecture, and the overall emphasis is on stability, automation, and intuitive operation rather than raw speed or aerobatic performance. This isn't about thrill-seeking, it's about utility. What I find interesting is how the flyer positions itself amid regulatory uncertainty. Instead of waiting for rules to fully mature, it's acting as a pressure test for them. Vehicles like this force cities to ask real questions about airspace management, zoning, and emergency response, because once the tech exists, demand tends to follow. From an engineering standpoint, the flyer's electric propulsion system keeps noise and emissions low, which is critical for dense urban environments. It's quiet enough to be tolerated, clean enough to be justified, and efficient enough to scale. This is one of those vehicles that doesn't scream future. It whispers it, and that's often how the most disruptive ideas enter the room. Number 3. Zooks Robotaxi Zooks's autonomous robotaxi feels like a complete rejection of how cars have looked for over a century, and that's intentional. There's no front, no back. The vehicle is fully symmetrical, meaning it can move in either direction without turning around. That design choice alone solves countless urban inefficiencies, especially in tight city environments where space is limited and maneuverability matters more than top speed. Inside, passengers sit facing each other, creating a more social, almost lounge-like experience rather than the usual forward-facing isolation. It accommodates up to four people and is clearly designed for shared mobility, not private ownership. Technically, Zooks is stacked. The vehicle relies on a full sensor suite LiDAR, radar, cameras providing 360-degree awareness at all times. That constant situational mapping is what allows it to operate without human intervention while maintaining safety standards high enough for dense city deployment. Performance is tuned for urban duty. It can reach speeds of up to 75 miles per hour and operate for up to 16 hours on a single charge, which makes it viable for all-day service cycles. And because Zooks isn't selling these vehicles to individuals, but instead deploying them as a ride-hailing fleet, optimization happens at a system level rather than a consumer one. What stands out here is philosophy. Zooks isn't trying to make driving safer, it's trying to make driving obsolete. And once cities adapt to vehicles that don't need drivers, parking, or traditional flow patterns, everything else starts changing with them. Number 2. Roid Tech Raptor the Raptor from Roidtech looks deceptively simple, but its modular philosophy is what makes it quietly radical. This three-wheeled electric mobility platform is built from two detachable components, an upper design unit and a lower base block. They can be separated or reconnected depending on how the vehicle is being used, which opens up possibilities far beyond personal commuting. Powered by a 48-volt battery, the Raptor reaches speeds of around 30 km per hour, and delivers a range of roughly 40 kilometers per charge. It's classified as a motor-assisted vehicle, meaning it requires a driver's license, but its footprint is far smaller than a conventional car. What makes it compelling isn't speed or range, it's adaptability. Roidtech envisions this platform being used not just for transport, but for mobile businesses, delivery systems, and flexible urban services that can be reconfigured on demand. From a design standpoint, modularity reduces waste and increases life cycle value. Instead of replacing entire vehicles, components can be swapped, upgraded, or repurposed. That's a sustainability angle most mobility companies don't talk about enough. The Raptor feels like an answer to a question cities are only starting to ask. What if transportation didn't have to be one thing all the time? Number 1. Redroid Kanguro Redroid Kanguro might be the most quietly transformative entry on this list because it blurs the line between vehicle, robot, and companion. At its core, Kanguro is a personal assistant robot designed to follow you around autonomously, carrying groceries or belongings using advanced mapping and environment recognition systems. But with a simple command, it transforms into a rideable scooter-like vehicle, capable of carrying a human at speeds of up to 10 kilometers per hour. That dual identity is what makes it fascinating, Kanguro isn't waiting to be summoned from a curb, it's already with you. It navigates independently, avoids obstacles, 
and can switch between manual and autonomous modes depending on the situation. In emergencies, it can even override user input to prevent collisions. From a technical standpoint, this requires tight integration between robotics, mobility control, and real-time spatial awareness. It's not just about movement, it's about trust. You're relying on the machine to understand your environment as well as you do. The long-term vision is even more interesting. The creators imagine fleets of Kanguro units being summoned like taxis, especially for short-distance urban travel where full-sized vehicles are inefficient. This isn't about replacing cars, it's about rethinking companionship, assistance, and transport as one continuous experience. And honestly, that might be the most disruptive idea of all.